Hey, Carl. We had a bad. Oh. Seems like we had a bad connection there for a minute. One second. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Josh. Josh says hi. Tell Josh hello. Maybe by the time you leave, you'll finally be a real man. It says, after I'm leaving, I finally be a real man. <laughs> well, tell him hello and salute to him. All right, well. Josh, salute to you. Uh, I won't keep you too much longer, Carl. I wanted to ask you a few things, and I got a few fan questions. Um, so you, yeah, said that the, you said that the rule set in Sweden, there's no kicks or knees to a grounded opponent? One more time. <laughs> Sorry, there, the internet no, you're, you're good. You're good. It, there's no kicks or knees to a grounded opponent in Sweden? No. I would prefer they add the knees to the ground because it's such a huge weapon. So it will be more realistic of a fight if you can knee. And it doesn't look as brutal as a soccer kick either. What did you did you happen to see the slam um, that Jessica Andrade did to Rose Namiunis this last weekend? Yeah, I saw it. I saw the gifts. <laughs> I didn't see it live though. Do you? Uh, I mean, that's a legal move, but there's been a lot of debate about that. Do you have a a theory as to why so many people are are, are kind of shocked by this? Uh, I, I don't know why they're shocked. It's a part of the game. If you get slammed, you can get knocked out. Yeah. And we've seen it's a weapon to throw. So. And it was perfectly legal under the rules. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're not spiking them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wondered about that. Um, I wanted to, I got a fan question. This is from uh, Pride Fan 76 on, on Reddit. Um, he yeah. asks, what your favorite music to listen to is? Uh, that depends on the occasion. Like, uh, I've started uh, listening to metal recently after Josh influence. <laughs> but uh, I listen to various kinds. I listen to hip hop, reggae. Like, you know, I train with mostly like people from African descent. So it's a lot of like reggae beats and stuff like that to get rhythm in. I train to salsa. But. Uh, when I'm by myself and just when I lift weights, I get a good workout then. It's uh, probably like metal and old school rock. There is a lot of Swedish metal, right? I mean, being so close to Norway. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of metal in Sweden, Norway, and Finland. What about hip-hop? A lot of hip-hop there? Yes, uh, I'm from the su uh, suburb in Stockholm, so there's a Met a few rappers and I've been in their music videos and stuff like that too. I, I would love to hear some uh, Swedish hip hop. I don't know if I've ever heard any before, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to check some of that out sometime. You know? Oh, there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube where American and some British guys react to Swedish hip hop. So yeah, most of them give possible positive feedback. All right, I'm gonna have to check that out. Uh, if you could, uh, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? That's a good question. Hmm. As long as it has a beach and it's sunny, then I'm happy. That's all I need: a beach and the sun. Yeah, you wouldn't like it in Colorado where I am. It snows all the time, and we live with. 8,000 feet and there's no beach in sight, you know? No. Oh, no. I live like that now. There's uh, darkness nine months of the year. Wow. It's cold. It makes you long for the beach and the sun. What is the darkness nine months of the year like? How do you, how do you adjust your training schedule? Well, it depends. Certain periods of the year, it's a bit... 
tougher, you feel uh, like more easily more depressed, you just anxious. But uh, you have to fight your way through it. And as long as the body is like healthy and not getting sick, then you can push. But a lot of people get sick when there's like dark, cold, you ride the subway everywhere. Some always somebody's coughing. So you gotta keep on watch, extra eye out for infections and inflammation in the body, and really listen to it. Why is that, Carl? Is it not enough vitamin D? Why, why are people getting sick? It's probably vitamin D, but also like bad habits and uh, people. Since, but mostly in lack of vitamin D, I think actually. So, so do you take vitamin D as a supplement? I do. Do, but uh, I always try to go out to my balcony and get some light, whether it's cloudy or not, just to get like the rays into the body and it works. First, it makes you feel better, even though it's good to. It's sometimes really cold, but it's good to press yourself to get out there. Right. See, I, I would love that myself. I'm a sky watcher. I love to watch the stars and the planets and stuff. I, I would. Oh, cool, you know, man. I'd be in heaven there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's an awesome. It seems like an awesome place. Tell me about your uh, gym in Sweden, the Pancreas Gym. How long have you been training there? So the Pancreas Gym is the. I've been training there for ten years. So it's uh, the oldest MMA gym in Sweden. It was started by my coach, Umar Buish, in uh, 1996. He used to fight for Pankras in Japan. So that's why it's called like Pankras Gym Sweden. So mostly all fighters from Sweden have somewhere or some, some time in time trained there or passed through. Wow. So it's a good gym. It's a small gym. We're like a small family. We don't, we're not that big, but everyone is trying to help each other and push, push each other to the best they can be. We have uh, guys competing in PFL. You have them in UFC, Bellator. We have the one, one FC, one the welterweight champion, Sebastian there. So there's a lot of good guys there. Still a small gym, but we're a family. Did you ever uh, consider fighting in Pancrase, or is it just not enough competition with the heavier weights there? I haven't got the, I haven't got the opportunity, so I can't uh, know for sure. But uh, if I get an offer, and uh, yeah, could represent Rice, and why not? Yeah, we. Had... Uh, I like to fight in Japan. So. Yeah, yeah. It seems like. Uh, would, would you? Uh... Would you describe the crowd as completely different than anywhere else that you fought? The crowd in Japan? Yes, yes, completely different. They're all really into the fights, really respectful fights, applauding. Uh, and the they just like, it's completely different than anywhere else. Like home, they're more like a soccer crowd. They're like, ah. <laughs> right, and chants and uh, drinking beer and just having a blast watching two guys beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. They have a different perspective in Japan. That I like it, but it also makes you put extra pressure on yourself because you know they're watching your every move. Yeah, 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 really, really quiet crowd, but really knowledgeable crowds. Um, before we go, I want to ask you about the legendary Lenny Hart. Uh, did you? What was it like to hear your yeah. name? Spoken by her for the first time. Uh, it was surreal. Uh, I thought I was dreaming. I was like, this is not happening. But then uh, <laughs> we watched it afterwards on tape. It was like, oh shit, it's so cool. I can't believe she's, just <laughs> she's screaming not... my name. <laughs> <laughs> she... All the names in the world is just mine. Oh, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, she's an awesome lady. She's been a guest on the podcast, and uh, I can't say enough nice things about her. Um, she, she did an introduction for me that'll be on this podcast, and I felt like I didn't even deserve it. I felt like I had to go out in the street and get in a fist fight in order for her to say my name like that. <laughs> <laughs> but she's uh, I can't... <laughs> so is every time is every time 
is every time like that? Do you feel that every time that she says your name? Does that pump you up, the opening ceremony and everything like that? Yeah, the whole, like, yeah, the ceremony gets me really pumped up. Maybe a little bit too much because you get the adrenaline rushing. You're just like, I just try to enjoy the moment as it is and try to calm down a little bit before the fight so I don't get too, I don't know, like too hype. Uh, just trying to keep it uh, together a bit. <laughs> uh, w would you ever like to fight first on one of these Ryzen cards? Because you know that it's kind of an honorary thing in Japan for the first fight to be the tone setter, right? Would, would that be something? Yeah, I, I did fight uh, Theodoras Augustolis. We were the first match That's back in July 2017. So I enjoyed that. You could, uh, you know, when the whole thing was going to start, you could prepare your warm up very good and uh, go out there and uh, get get the finish. That's what they want in the first fight, and I got at it. So it was very nice. Get it over with quick, and then I could sit back in the crowd uh, drinking a beer and watching the fight. I was going to ask you: Do you sit in the crowd and watch the rest of the fights, or do you watch from the back? The, this last time I watched from the back, but uh, when I fight earlier on, on the evening, I usually sit out in the crowd and watch. Wow, wow, that, that must be amazing. Uh, two more things before I let you go. Um, you just spoke on, you know, fighting first and, and, and what that's like. Uh, do you feel like there's a sense of pressure to get the finish in Japan? Did you catch that? Uh, I really want to prove myself when I'm in the Ryzen and fight to the best of the abilities. And uh, I feel I can do much better than I have performed, but uh, that's also me as a perfectionist. But sometimes you just gotta give yourself a pat on the shoulder and say you did a good fight too. Well, I think I speak for fans across the world, Carl, when I say that you're one of the most entertaining fighters, and uh, I hope Ryzen continues to bring you back. You know that there's been fighters before that have won both of their fights or two or three of their fights, and they don't come back because they're they're out there point fighting. Mm. They're not going for the finish. Japan has that. Yeah. You know, they want people to go for the finish, and, and I think that's why you'll continue to be invited back, and you're one of the first people that ever fought in any of the Ryzens, and so... Uh, I speak for everyone, I think, all the Ryzen fans across the world. When I hope that we see you fight there many, many more times, sir. Thank you. Thank you very lot. Uh, that means a lot to me. And I can't wait to uh, see, see when you have another fight booked. Um, hopefully we could do this again, either in the lead up to the next fight or after you fight again. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully I get a fight soon so we can and get at it again. Well, I'll, I'll make I'll make sure the fans are pushing for you, Carl, because you deserve it, and I believe that you're one of the most talented and up and coming fighters in Japan and worldwide. To be honest with you, at the light heavyweight Thank division, you. we we spoke about the UFC. It's kind of thin. I, I mean, there's not there's not a, a whole bunch of great light heavyweights in the UFC currently. Um, actually, I believe that some of the best light heavyweights are outside of the UFC, and so uh, I just I just hope I agree. I hope the best for you in continued health, and I uh, hope. How, how much longer are you training out there? I'm going home uh, on Monday, so it's just uh, here for another couple of days. Then I'm going home. All right. Are you excited to go home? Yeah, it's you know it's a nice abroad, but it's always a special feeling coming home when you've been away for a while. Are you going to be going home with bumps and bruises and getting your ass kicked from Josh? Yeah, Josh has kicked my ass all week. <laughs> yeah, last week. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Carl. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your time. I'm humbled and thankful for your time. Um, and I hope to have you on again. Thank you. If you need anything, you please let me know, and I'll do what I thank can. You. And thank you so much, sir. Salute.
Thank you. Have a nice day. Take care.